Hey everybody, Joe Crookston here in my home in Ithaca, New York. When I paint, it is all about having no fear. And you know what it's like when someone puts a blank canvas in front of you, right? One of the things that I love about the style that I do, if you zoom in on this painting right here, check that out. Look at the texture. There's so many layers on there. Look at this one down here. It almost has kind of a leather quality. Look at the different layers. Texture, it's built up. There's probably 37 or 40 layers of paint on there. The mistakes that I made are what makes this thing beautiful to me. If it was one layer of paint, it would be stiff and simple. And it's because I've layered 30, 40 layers of paint on there. And I'm using acrylic paint. Um, just a shout out that I live in Ithaca, New York. And the paints that I use are uh, golden paints. These are made in New Berlin, New York, about an hour and a half from where I live here in Ithaca, New York. Come on over here, check this out. If you go into this painting right here, there are so many textures and layers. I might use a knife. Sometimes I use a knife and I scrape and scrape and scrape. I almost always, I'll show you this brush that I'm using right here. This is a brush, it is about a two cent paintbrush. And I love cheap, cheap brushes. The cheaper, the better. And what I do is I I, uh, I, I basically mess them up to make them kind of fuzzy. And that's how I get this really kind of fuzzy texture by using dry paint. So basically one thing is I almost never use water when I'm painting. I almost always use dry. So I'm gonna show you, watch this. Uh, I'm gonna use some of this beautiful golden teal. Okay, now another rule is that Never, ever, ever will I ever put paint on a canvas that I haven't mixed with another color. So when I do workshops with kids, one of the main rules, and yeah, there's rules, it's art, but that you never take paint directly out of the tube and then put it onto the canvas. Why? Because some of the magic is creating your own colors and kind of creating different shades of different hues and that kind of thing. So let's say I take some of this yellow ochre just a bit of that, and I mix it with this teal. Now watch this. Oh. You see that? So that is dry, there's no water. I'm basically using, I'm gonna dab this off of here. I might draw a nice little circle with my crayon right there. So this is dry, completely dry, meaning there's no water involved in the painting that I do. And you'll see that I do a lot of this quick strokes and that is how I'm painting this on top of probably 27 layers that are already on there. Look at that. Okay. And that is how I get warm movement fuzziness to it. Okay. So I'm going to hold this up right here. Check this out. This is a painting that has so many layers of paint on it. I would say maybe 40 layers. You can see big whole pock marks in there where I've done layers. And the truth of it is, after all of these layers, I think it's okay. It's not my favorite painting. I'm going to use my orbital sander. I'm going to sand it so I better go outside so I don't get in trouble. Let's go outside. Come on. I'm going to lay it down. I got my orbital sander. And I'm going to sand this thing. And just to kind of smooth it, it's all, it's pretty rough right now. So what I want it to be is layered, but with a lot of, with a smooth top surface. So here we go. Yeah, I love using the sander. That's, now check this out. So you can see how I've exposed some of this, uh, some of the texture and some of the color from underneath. I'm gonna bring this over here. So this is all very, there's very little paint on my brush. And I'm dabbing it, dabbing it, dabbing it, dabbing it. 
And the cool thing about it is if I don't like it, guess what I do? I take the orbital sander and I start over and I just keep going and going and going. Mistakes. So back to the fear thing. What I would say is that every time you're painting, this is what happens for me. I get going. I like the colors. I like the way it's happening. And about halfway through, I started liking it. And then I got anxious and I started to get filled with like, oh no, I don't want to screw it up. And that is the moment where you have to talk yourself down and recognize that that is the teacher. Painting is not just a cute exercise and making, you know, pretty pictures. But for me, the painting is a teacher. As soon as I notice fear coming in, I want to do this right. I want to make sure I don't screw it up because I really like it, is the moment as my teacher. And I have to take a breath and I have to look at it and say, trust, just keep moving, keep moving. You got to get in the flow, get in the flow. The other part of it too is where you're working on a painting and it's not coming together very well and you're kind of struggling with it and you're kind of, you start to get tight. You're trying really hard to make it work. And that's also a place where I feel like I got to back off, come back the next day and do some bold strokes. Uh, anytime I'm stuck, if I feel like uh, eh, it's not working, something's not right, I try to nitpick and kind of make it better. Nope, I'll just get, I'll get a color and I'll completely paint over it with really bold, quick strokes. I'm gonna create something completely different. I'm gonna just say, well, it's not wrong. It's actually, what I'm doing is I'm building up the layers on this. And that, the layers, is what makes the art beautiful. Come over here and I'll show you a painting that I did I did about 14 years ago. So my style has changed so much in the last years. This painting here is called Everything Here Is Good. And if you know my music, I have a song called Everything Here Is Good. And find a brick made of clay, red and brown, and lay it down. Put a vase made of glass on the brick and back away. Put a ball on the vase and the clock and the nail in the house. And this style, I like this painting okay. I like the idea of it and I like the song a lot. But what I would say is for me, my style has changed in that I used to try to be very precise and careful and try to almost like create realistic looking vases and that kind of thing. And I'm just less interested in that. If you look up here, if you, if you really look in here, and look at like say the door that door only has one layer of like lavender this has one layer of red there's not a lot of texture and color buildup. so look at the gray shingles they're just kind of they're all very consistent and there's not a lot of texture there my style has changed so much in the last 15 years where it's really about the, the texture that i love like this one over here check this out this is a really new one. This is probably actually the most new paint painting I've made. And look at that green and blue right there. Look at how many layers. It was very abstract and there was a lot going on and I just kept taking more and more of the image away. Um, and this painting has 40 or 50 layers of paint on it. And I did it and I did it over and over and over. Um, here's another one I'll show you. This one I used a lot of uh, scratch marks right here. So I, I use a serrated knife and after I paint something, I'll um, take a serrated knife and just whoosh, 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 and use the hatch marks. And you can see how it scrapes the top layer off and exposes what was underneath it. And um, that's something I enjoy doing. It gives a lot of energy, like there's a lot of movement and energy in that. Another thing about this painting is, one of my kind of rules and that I kind of try to stick by is I always want my images to go off of the canvas. The canvas is not a box, it's a window. So the canvas is not a box, it's a window. 
So you don't want to confine your images inside of the box. You want them to go off of the edge of the page. And to me, that is essential. Now, with that said, every rule is made to be broken. One of the things that I love about this is that the elbows of the dude who is holding up the world go right to the edge. And at first I thought, oh no, it felt like I was being afraid and kind of staying in a box. But when I stood back, I thought, I love that about it. So every rule is meant to be broken. You can break the rules. Make shapes that look cool. Put colors down that look great. Don't take it too seriously. It's not about right or wrong. What matters is that you are working with color in a way that is a meditation. Right now in our world, I feel like any time that you can spend lost in the moment, lost in creativity, lost in not judging yourself is well spent time. And I'm gonna take you outside one more time. Let's go outside for a little bit more uh, orbital sanding. And I have this one out here. This one's nice and dark. It's got a lot of layers. <laughs> Get all the dust off. We'll bring that in. I was saying earlier how I really like a nice dark background. And so what I'm going to do here is just for fun, I'm going to create... I'm going to just... I am just going to create something here that... With my, this is a dark, big crayon. What I'm going to do is just begin. paint on there. I'm going to decide where the light source is. Maybe we'll do the light source up here. Maybe the light source will be up here. And then I'm going to get the paint on my palette here. our light source, I'm going to say, hmm. yeah, oh yeah, see that's a good, I'm going to put a little more yellow in there, it's a little green, maybe a little bit of that, there, I'm going to dry that brush off a little bit, what I mean by that is just to get a lot of the thick off, and now, here's this fuzzy quality that you'll see in a lot of my paintings, no water, quick movements, I want to move in many different directions. One thing I try never to do is I don't really want you to see the, the brush strokes. I want you to see sort of a general solid sense of color that has a lot of kind of ease and motion to it that fills the space, but that you don't really see the brush strokes necessarily. You see the texture, but not the brush strokes. There's some brush strokes right there. I might want to kind of go up and down and cover those over a little bit. And why do I do that? It's not a right or wrong. That's just part of the style that I have developed. Now look at that. You can look at that and say, there's, that's a fuzzy little light source there. <laughs> I am gonna go a little lighter into that center. So I'm gonna use even lighter. There. You can really see the fuzziness on the edges of there. And I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave the dark ring in there so it really sets off that color. Now, maybe a little more yellow. I'm going to keep going here, so here we go. Hang on.
definitely, oh, see, I added a little bit of red. Got a little orangey kind of quality to that. Fuzzy. Especially at this stage of the painting, I try to go fast. Not so fast that it's crazy, but so that it's very much energy. So that you're not getting stuck. You're not getting stuck in is it good enough, right or wrong, you kinda, I'm filling in my color shapes. Filling in all my color shapes with a dry paint. Again, if I start painting and I start getting nervous, oh no! If I start feeling like I'm doing it wrong or it's not looking right, that's the moment to just go into it deeper, to let go, to let go. Younger, I worked for this woman named Faith Truchel, and she would have me come over on Saturdays and we would work. And one of the things that we would do is we would watch Saturday afternoon Bob Ross and he would teach us how to paint. And uh, I always loved Bob Ross, but I was never really drawn to painting like landscapes like Bob Ross but I always liked his attitude and his calm sense of connection with his paintings. I always liked that about him. I'm gonna get some yellow to put on here. I'm gonna mix it with there and get some nice green. And... video and the painting. Uh, if you have some brushes, if you have canvas, a piece of wood at home, and you're staring at a white canvas, just plop some paint on there, let it dry, sand it down, keep going, have no fear, enjoy the process, let it be a meditation, let art be healing for you, let it be fun, no judgment, I'm not good enough, I'm not able to do it, it's not true. 
you can do it. Have a great time. My name is Joe Crookston. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see y'all later. Thanks.